mixed up a little bit this morning. We've got our buck up on the milk stand. The reason why I have him up here is not to milk him, obviously, um, but to check his eyelids and make sure that his FAMACHA score is good. And that's a that's a tool used for determining if there's a high worm load by looking at the color of the eyelids. If they're nice dark red, they're nice and good. If they're light pink or pale, then it means they're anemic from too many worms. But everybody's eyelids are looking nice and pink and red this morning, so we're looking good. I've checked all the girls. Now I'm on to the boys, and I am also trimming hooves. So we're doing some hoof maintenance, and it's important that boys can be locked into the milk stand for this reason. So if you are starting out with goats and you have a couple of young bucks, get them up on that milk stand and teach them that it's a good, happy experience with some food. They love it. Okay, I'm not going to show you my actual trimming because I'm very new at this. I don't feel like I'm capable of tutorial. But I will show you my before. You see how overgrown that is? Sorry, he's wiggling. And how long those toenails are. So, this is my after. You see how nice and flush it is with the middle hoof. If you guys have any recommendations about um, taking it shorter or how to trim up these back part of the hooves, sit more safely. I'm afraid I'm going to knit because it's softer. But I think I've got the front part pretty well done. So, excuse all the dirt. So, that's, that's what we're working on this morning. And that's the finished. I could um, straighten out some of those edges a little bit, but he's getting fighty, so I'm going to consider that good. Again, if you know ways to safely prune this part, prune, listen to me, such a gardener, um, let me know in the comments, because I am new at this, and I'm watching YouTube videos to try to learn the best ways, but I'm afraid, because this is softer, I'm afraid it's going to nick and start bleeding, so I'm being, you know, leaving a little more than I feel like I should, but I'm not sure how much further I can go. So if you have any tips for that, let me know. It's not as easy. He's a big butt. I got him up there, and I'm going to do this quick because he is like, why am I on here? And he's big, so it's harder. <laughs> Wish me luck. Whew. Glad I got all those nails pinned. They needed it. The boys especially because I don't have them on the milk stand as often. Well, never. So, so they... They only get uh, an occasional snip snip when I can catch them. The girls are always up on the milk stand, so I'm always trimming away when I see a little extra growth. So, glad to get that done. And now I'm just going to check out their new paddock that Ryan set up for them this morning. And go in and have some breakfast. And here's their new area that they get to browse in. And uh, Willow and Fancy got that section over there. It does have one stump in the middle that has a bunch of privet growing out of it and berries and um, blackberry bramble and stuff. And also all the grass and lower weeds. And then these big guys over here, can't even see them. They uh, are on the back side of the house. Don't worry, we don't have them where they can get into any barbed wire. But there is a line of privet right here that they're getting a chance to eat down and nibble on behind their shelter. So they're getting a good a good workout. We got this beautiful goldenrod blooming. If you don't know you can use goldenrod to make a tincture. You just submerge those flowers in some um, grain alcohol and you can make a tincture to use for sinus support. So goldenrod is a good thing to have on your homestead. It is also a great pollinator source. It's um, one of the only things blooming this time of year for the honeybees. So if our bees were still here, they'd be loving our property. I purposely left a lot for them. But next year, they'll be back. We'll get more bees. <laughs>